This is 680 CJOB. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another episode of The Main Ingredient. We have a great show lined up for you today. We are joined by a young chef from Jamaica named Noel Cunningham to talk about his journey to Winnipeg and his Jamaican fusion cooking style. We're also joined by food blogger Shel Zolkovich and Johnny Keane from the LA Travel Group to talk about the Taste the Vacation culinary tour that's coming up this March in Mexico. But first, I'm talking to Brad Smith who was formerly The Bachelor Canada, but is now the host of the upcoming season of Chop Canada that starts this Sunday, October 16th on the Food Network. So first, how about we uh, talk a little bit about you, Brad, and how you ended up as being the host of Chop Canada since, um, you know, we'll let everybody know you've done a ton of things in the in the last few years, right? Yeah, everything has kind of been serendipitous. Uh, and obviously, I mean, you have to have sort of, you know, opportunity and luck and and a little bit of talent, but they all have to come together. So I was literally on The Bachelor, and then The Bachelor people hired me on to their morning show here in Toronto, uh, Breakfast Television, and then of which I did their show Entertainment City and Your World this week. So I got to really delve into the production side. But funny enough, because of Breakfast Television, they used to have these cooking segments where they would, you know, like every morning show, it's like, let's make some hamburgers or stuff. And um, after they would say cut and go to break, I would run in and eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> and legitimately, one day the host, Dina, was like, why don't we give an extra minute here so Brad actually runs on and eats everything live on TV. And I think one morning I ate like four hamburgers in the span of a five-minute segment. <laughs> and the host, or sorry, the casting director from Chop Canada called my agent and was like, I know Brad loves food. Would he be interested in trying out for us? And that's just how it happened. What a great deal, huh? I guess eating does come in handy, doesn't it? Right? Being a pig on TV, stuff in your face <laughs> actually paid off into a job. <laughs> I got to remember that. Um, okay, so for those who aren't familiar with Chop Canada, maybe you can describe what the show's about. Yeah, um, so, you know, we have four mystery baskets, and in those baskets, we have four ingredients that none of the chefs know what they're cooking with. Right. And literally, the first time they ever see what they're cooking with is when they open them up. And then they have to make, uh, you know, an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert from these crazy ingredients. Like, we screw them over so bad. Like, we'll have, like, a giant octopus and gummy bears, and it's just a, some of the stuff just doesn't make sense, and they have to find a way to make sense of it. Yeah, I don't know how people handle that. Okay, so this year's <laughs> been, this year you guys have a rotating panel of judges, including um, Mark McEwen, who, uh, who was a head judge on Top Chef Canada for four seasons. So I'm wondering, um, what did each of these chefs bring to the table? Pardon the pun. And, uh, oh, well, I mean, they're all different. They all come from a very different style of cooking. I mean, like you look at Mark, he's probably Canadian-wide the most famous guy that we have, but he's honestly one of the nicest. At Lynn Crawford, who's famous from pitching in, but one of the funniest women I've ever met. Um, all of our judges are uniquely so talented, mm -hmm. and, but the thing that makes them the best is they really want to cultivate the creative potential of these chefs that come in, and especially this year with kids and teens. Um, so we're lucky that uniquely on our set, we walk in every day and we're ec ecstatic to see each other. And not only that, but taste some food, have some fun, have some laughs, and, and really kind of get to be part of something that's really like, such a crazy process. Who out of all of the judges would you say was hardest on the competitors? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I'm going to have to go with Michael Smith just because he takes his food very seriously. And he's very serious about the competition and whoever wins the 10000 bucks because for him, that's... You know, that, change, that changes a chef's life into buying an ice cream machine or, or buying something that's going to make them profit. So he really takes it seriously. Right. Okay, so this, this season includes a bunch of chop specials, and the first up is, uh, is a junior cook's, correct? Yeah, so we have 8- to 12-year-olds for six episodes starting October 16th. And these, these kids, honestly, I remember Antonio Park said it. He's like, if these and the next generation of Canadian chefs were in good hands. Like, we were knocked out by how far advanced these kids are from when we were that age. Like, where did you find these kids? I have an 11-year-old daughter, and I wouldn't let her near the stove. And when I was 11, man, I would have burned the house down. So Listen, like, my parents didn't did let they... me hold a knife until I was 21. <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, I, we, we, we put an open casting call out, and you'd be surprised how many uh, great, uh, great chefs that we had to turn down because we found so many good kids. Right, so I was reading the biography on a lot of on a lot of the kids, and one of them really stood out to me, and uh, a kid named Cameron Knowles from Milton, Ontario. And he yeah. said that if he wins the prize money, he's going to use it to upgrade his family kitchen to industry standards. Like, what is that? I mean, I mean, I couldn't believe it. When I'm, when I'm asking them, you know, what are you going to do with the 5000 bucks if you win? And they're like, you know, I'm going to give it to charity or I'm going to buy a deep fryer for my house. So I'm like, well, what are you going to buy that's a kid thing? <laughs> I know. You know. When are you going to get some L.A. gears that light up when you run? For sure. Like, none, none of them, all of them were so, such old souls. 
that they really were looking to do something with the, within the culinary world or do something for the family. It was so sweet to see all the kids give back. Yeah, very focused uh, at such a young age. It's kind of crazy. Um, so what is the prize money for the junior competitors? So for the juniors, it's $5,000. Uh, for the teens, it's five thousand, I believe, and then for the rest, it's ten grand. Wow, that's a nice, tidy little profit there, hey? All right, so so next up, uh, you have the chopped judges competing, also, right? Oh my God! I, if, if one show was going to break all of our ratings records, that's going to be it. For I sure. I mean, it's not just the judges either. We have Anya Romovich, who you know, he, she creates the next great culinary minds at George Brown. Uh, Mark McEwen, the most famous chef. Michael Smith, who basically built Food Network here in Canada, and uh, Susser Lee, who's probably internationally the most famous chef we have like who judges these judges so i think for that episode i think we have uh lynn crawford massimo capra and i'm mind blanking on the third one uh but i think it was roger mooking actually and the 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 hard fact is that these people are judging their peers Mm -hmm. and no matter how good of a chef you are someone's got to go home first um okay so you guys have grandmothers up next right i can't imagine that a grandmother episode would be cutthroat, but am I right or wrong? You know what? These these women, I call it, they were the most cutely competitive people of all time because they didn't want to win it for themselves. Right. They wanted to win it for their grandchildren because most of their grandchildren are who got them to apply and who actually started them watching Chops. Uh, but they took their cooking seriously because... I don't, you know, grandmothers are rock stars in the family. If you're, if you're the, if you're the lead cook, so for sure, couldn't imagine critiquing it. I'm glad I wasn't one critiquing these these women who've been cooking for 50 years. You know, for sure, you 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 have a good job. You get to enjoy everybody's company and not have to judge anybody on what they make. <laughs> Listen, right? I'm there to to make the our young chefs and our our, our chefs look good and make our judges have great conversation. Uh, but we're lucky because all of us are there for the same reason. That's just out of a good time, make some good TV. For sure. Okay, so firefighters is another portion that you guys have. So I'm I'm assuming that one was competitive because, again, if you're on the show and you're competing with other firefighters, you know that not only are the guys in your hall watching, but there's guys in many halls watching, right? Funny enough, though, it was really competitive, but in the most team atmosphere I've ever seen of each one helping each other out because there's this overall theme of brotherhood Mm -hmm. uh, that no matter where you come, we know what you're doing and and we support you. And especially it was a very intense episode because we had – uh, one of the uh, firefighters from Fort Mac, obviously with all the, the the atrocities that happened out there and with all the forest forest fires, you saw his his story and how much he'd lost and how much he'd given back to his community. So yeah. it's going to be one of the more emotional episodes for sure. Yeah, that'll be good to watch. Um, and celebrities. You have a celebrity episode. Do you remember some of the celebrities that are on that episode? Uh, yeah, so for our celebrity episode, we actually have Roz Weston from ET Canada, uh, well, actually a good friend of mine outside, and I was like, oh my God, Roz is coming on to cook? I don't think he can cook. <laughs> um, th- then we have Mary Walsh, uh, obviously one of the funniest women in Canada. We have Stephen Page, a uh, great singer, formerly of Bare, Bare Naked Ladies. And then we have uh, Keisha Shante. So it's funny, I actually know one of Keisha's friends out west, and I was like, oh yeah, your friend Keisha's coming on. She's like, Keisha can't cook? <laughs> but Keisha fooled everybody. She's a sandbagger. They were all really... Um, they really, uh, they don't, not only made the show good because they made great TV, but they made good food. They made everybody laugh. And that was one of our funner days. Right. As soon as I saw Keisha Shanta's name on there, my question to you was, can you confirm she can actually cook? Because if she can, I will consider her the perfect human specimen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can consider her the perfect woman then. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. Um, Brad, thanks for coming on the show. So maybe we can give everyone some basic info on when these shows air or where they can get more information about you and the show. Yes. Yeah, so you can always hit me up on all my social media as Brad C. Smith, uh, but, or go to foodnetwork.ca and you're going to, you're going to see that it's airing. It starts airing October 16th at Sunday at 8 PM. Uh, that's the juniors. That's six episodes. And then later on in the season, it goes back to our Saturday time slot. But for right now, uh, Sunday at eight, uh, this weekend is going to be the first ever Chop Canada Juniors, and people are going to be really, really surprised about how good these kids are. For sure. That'll be awesome. I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Oh, appreciate you, man. All right. Enjoy your day. Take it easy. Do you know what Jamaican fusion cooking is? Well, stick around and find out after the break. We'll be right back. Hey there, peeps. I'm back talking to Noel Cunningham. He's my chef from Jamaica. He's also known as Chef Cunny, and he's here to talk about what led him to our great city. First, let's start by... Uh Let's start by you telling me or telling everybody yes. who you are and where you are from. Yes, so I'm Chef Noel Cunningham. I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, all the way from the Caribbean. <laughs> yes, right here in Winnipeg. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. That's where I was born. Yeah, my yes. mom too. Okay, very yeah. good. Yeah, you got to meet her, man. It's going to be a For good sure, time. yes. All right, um, 
before you became, well, you know, obviously you're a chef now, before you became a chef, just like many other one, young people, you probably had many career paths in mind. Yes. Right. So what, what, what were some of those career paths and what ultimately led you to choose yes. a culinary way to go? Like for me, just like everyone, I was like wondering, what can I do? What should I do? What do I want to become? And then I was always making my list. My sister was always like, like, um, you know, in Jamaican terms, like, don't want to become everything. <laughs> which you want to become everything, you know. <laughs> so at first, though, I wanted to become a teacher. Mm-hmm. I'm passionate about um, teaching and educating on others. So then after like, you know, like in sixth grade, seventh grade, high school now, I thought that I like business. Mm-hmm. Business is my thing. 11, 10th grade now, it was time to choose a more career. They gave us a list of, you know, the options. So there was like, there was like, um, Home economic, which is food and nutrition, clothing and textile, plumbing, electrical. So I assess all those areas like, do I want to become an electrician? No. A tailor? No. I saw cooking, food and nutrition. I'm like, oh yeah, I can do this, you know, become a chef, own my own restaurant and write recipe books, become like a Bobby Flair or Gordon Ramsay, you know. So yeah. I did, Um, I chose um cooking then mm-hmm. and I did, you know, pretty well in food and nutrition and I decided that like, yeah. Is that right? This is my thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so when you decided that, obviously there's got to be some sort of motivation, some yeah. sort of inspiration as to why you chose that. Like, Yeah. But like before, I was always in the kitchen with my mom. I was always at her foot, you know, stirring that pot, tasting this, you know, picking out a piece of the meat and <laughs> I didn't you know, those sort, of stu- those sort of stuff. So it was pretty, um, being always a her, then my aunt, who's a professional chef. Yep. She, yeah. So she's always baking and making all these fancy stuff. So it was always, you know, fascinating to see her cooking. And then she's always motivating me to, um, you should do cooking. You should do cooking. I'm like, okay, I'll think about it. Mm-hmm. And then, so by doing food and nutrition now with, and with her support, that was like amazing for me. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do, do this and become a chef. Okay. What was your first step? My first step after, um, graduating from high school, there's this culinary, um, College in Jamaica yep. called the Runaway Heart. That was my dream place to be at. Right. Because growing up, most chefs I saw on TV were from there, from Runaway Heart. I would see, you know, chef so and so from Runaway Heart. So I'm like, that's where I want to go. I didn't have no intention to go to university. I want to go to Runaway Heart. And then I applied there and I got through, did um my level one food and food preparation, did level two coming chef, level three, you know, went through the whole process. Right. And that's what I did. And graduated as a certified chef de party. Nice. Okay, yes. so after you after you left there, what happened? Did you start to, did you work for a restaurant? Yes, or did you I wanna... work. While I was doing my level two, I was working at the Edenism Hotel in, in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And then was working, going to school. Then I moved back to Kingston. And then I got my first, I would say, head chef position at age 21. I was at Cafe Mantra. Yep. Working. I went there as a regular cook, working, and the boss saw, you know, potential in me. And she's like, hey, I need to talk with you. I'm like, oh, I got fired now. <laughs> I just got this. <laughs> I just got the job in them can. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm out. Then she said, um, you know, she's going to promote me to be the kitchen manager as well as the um, manager for the restaurant. I'm like, okay, sure. You know, t- young 21. I'm like, this is opportunity. Why not? So I took it up and... It was pretty good. It was challenging. It was um, new. It was fresh. Nice experience. I put in all the work. And Mm -hmm. that's when I got, you know, my break on the scene as a young chef in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Was featured in um, numerous, you know, print and magazine and some television, you know. Person's looking for me now. Yeah, that's perfect. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Um, Okay, so there you are doing your thing in Jamaica. Yeah. What led you to Canada? You're still young. You said you were 21 at the time when that stuff took place. Yeah, at you were, 21. Yeah. You're 26 now. Yes. Old, old 26. Old 26. <laughs> I know, right? 26 times two. Yeah. All right. So um, that restaurant closed down at the time. I'm like, you know, what can I do? What I need something new. I like challenging myself. Then, you know, opportunities, opportunity open here, you know, for Canada. Mm-hmm. I got um, an offer to be here. So I moved here in 2013, December. And where... Where is here? I love this. Where exactly did you move? You go from Jamaica to where? I went from Jamaica all the way to Thompson, <laughs> Manitoba. That's, if you want to know where is that, that's, I was just neighbor. I was on Glory Avenue. <laughs> that's exactly where I was. 
Every, everybody in Winnipeg knows where Thompson is. Yeah, Thompson. Yeah, it's like super cold. Yeah. And I came when it was like minus 40 something. That is how it's okay. So what month did you arrive? December. Oh, December no. 9th, 2013. No, no, no. It was extremely cold. Oh, that's crazy. Yes, I came, you know, um, as a yardie, a Jamaican, my two jacket and my big <laughs> boots. And I came like Oliver Samuel, my ear muffin and... <laughs> Well put, well put up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, but it was new, you know, like, you know, as a Jamaican, you dream of snow and all these stuff. It was my, no, it was my first experience of snow. I've been to the US before, but right. it was different here though. Right. It was more, more snow here. Mm, a little bit. Compared to the <laughs> US and then to Thompson from, you know, the city here in Winnipeg. Yeah. It was like extremely far. Yeah. It's far, like. Like eight or nine hours, right? Nine. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> nine. I'm telling you, nine. <laughs> it's nine. <laughs> but if you drive good, eight, we'll take it here. Right. So the yeah. opportunity there led you to here. What led you to go from Thompson to Winnipeg? Uh, so um, I'm I all up in your business today. Yes, man. that's okay. That's okay. That's good. Yeah. So I work in Winnipeg. I started off in Thompson. I started at Chicken Chef. Yep. From the restaurant, you know, working as a regular cook. Mm-hmm. Then I got um, a job offer now at the Burntwood Hotel work as the kitchen manager. Right. Spent some time there. I still need some more challenge. Mm-hmm. So I decided that I'm going to move on down here to Winnipeg to launch my own business right. as well as to go back to school and enjoy some city life. Yeah, city life is good. Winnipeg yeah. is really exploding right now. Yeah. It's a good time yeah. to be a chef yeah. in Winnipeg, right? It's booming. Coming up after the news, weather, and sports, Chef Cunny is going to talk about some of his Jamaican fusion cooking recipes and the services that he offers. This is the main ingredient on 680 CJOB. Kevin here from the main ingredient. If you like Jamaican cuisine, make sure you tune in after the news, weather, and sports at the bottom of the hour to listen to Chef Cunny about his Jamaican fusion cooking style and the recipes and services that he offers. Don't go anywhere. The main ingredient continues here on 680 CJOB. We're back with Chef Cunny on the main ingredient, continuing our conversation about Jamaican cuisine. All right, so who are some of uh, the chefs that you look up to, locally or or famous chefs? Yeah, for Jamaica, um, in Jamaica, I've worked um, closer with Christian Sweeney. He mm-hmm. was the guy who gave me my first, you know, break at Cafe Mantra. He mm-hmm. was the consulting chef there, and I worked closer with him. And then I would say internationally, I look up to um, Gordon Ramsay. I like his style of cooking. Do you really? Yeah. Like, he's all about flavor. Yep. Starting off with good flavor, which I like. Then also presentation. Mm -hmm. And then what he, like, cleansiness and all these stuff. He's just like, he's a chef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I look up to him for that. And most persons shy away from him because of his behavior. But I've seen him, you know, in other shows. And he's a pretty cool guy. Right, I think a lot of it now, especially as yeah. far as television goes, because that's what he's known for, that yeah. they kind of play on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as his, his... His personality, yeah. Yeah, his cooking skills and his personality off the camera there. It's pretty, pretty, uh, yeah. pretty decent guy, right? So I kind of like him for that, yeah. All right, so let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about your YouTube channel. Yeah. I saw some of the videos that you have going on there. So, you know what? You, earlier you said that you were attracted to being, you know, you thought of maybe I'll, I'll be a teacher. Yeah. Whereas, especially when you look at your YouTube channel, and a lot of chefs now, of course, you're preparing food for yeah. a lot of people, but now it's a lot about teaching people about the you know ingredients and the things that they can make at home. So yes. is, is that what you really think about when you're making a lot of your videos? Yes, that was the whole aim of it. And I was trying to target um, persons who don't like to cook, mm-hmm. persons who like to cook but want to try something new. Right. That's the whole aim of it. And... Also, I'm teaching them new stuff, new ideas, mm-hmm. and how to create um, the same regular home dish or to elevate it restaurant style. Right. Yes. Right. I, I know the assumption sometimes is that if you're, let's say you're a Filipino, you're going to cook Filipino food. You're Jamaican, you're going to cook Jamaican food. Yeah. What would you consider your specialty? My specialty um, is fusion. Mm-hmm. Fusion is because as a Jamaican now in Canada, I'm like in the middle. So the whole aim of it is to introduce Caribbean flavors or I would say Jamaican flavors to persons international and then also to introduce a bit of flair to Jamaican cuisine. Right. So it's like mixing both together so that everyone is happy. Right. So sometimes you find, do, you, do you do Canadian dishes or dishes, you know, that aren't Jamaican and just I'll add do, a Jamaican um, flavor to it? I'll do Canadian dishes, you know, Italian dishes, French dishes with a Jamaican touch with it. You know, use yep. our scotch bonnet pepper, use um like I do Say, for example, a pesto um, pasta. Mm-hmm. I'll do a scotch bonnet pesto pasta because, you know, in Jamaica, we're known for a scotch bonnet pepper. Mm-hmm. And adding that note to the pesto, we kind of steal it a little 
to our cuisine, you know, add yeah. some Jamaican flavor to it. For yeah. sure. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about your catering company here in Winnipeg called yeah. Cuisine by Noel. By Noel, yes. So Cuisine by Noel is my little baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a fully integrated um, catering company, mm-hmm. which um, which I do classes. Mm-hmm. We do um, restaurant consultancy, private dinners. Let's talk about the classes you teach. Okay, so you, yes. Where do you do the classes? Do you do the classes in the person's home or do you yes. have a place that you... So I come to your home yep. and I will teach you whatever is it that you need to know. Is so right? it can be a dinner while you're learning at the same time from two persons to 2,000. So the person... So let's say I wanted to get this done. Yeah. We'd go over what we're going to cook and basically... Yes. So you can tell me what is it that you want. I can do up the grocery list, all these stuff, mm-hmm. and we can meet... And so if it's knife skill, mm-hmm. we buy all our vegetables, we plan a day, and then you want to learn knife skill. Mm-hmm. So I come to your home and I'll show you different cuts and how to get it, the sizes and all those stuff. Yeah, that's perfect. Yes. Yeah, sauces, awesome, different man. sauces. All. Let's talk about weddings. Yes. Right. So if I want to book you for a wedding, what does that include? What that do I get? In, um, if you have a team that, that you're working with, mm-hmm. I will work with your team as well. Right. Or I can also do a menu for you. Right. For, um, what most persons will do is have one standard menu. Mm-hmm. I do my menu based on what the person like, or I can propose a menu to you right. based on what I'm feeling about my client. Right. So it will be your menu. So let's try, let's yeah. say I don't even have a menu. Let's say I have no idea. I just know that, hey, I want some food. I want you to throw some ideas at me. Yeah, for, for sure. I'll give you like maybe six, five I, um, um, menu. Mm-hmm. And we can always um, move our own stuff to create one menu that will suit all your guests and yourself. But you just you just work together, whatever wherever yes. the person is, whether they have their own menu, whether you have to make up your own, yes, you just kind yes. of work it out, right? Yeah. So that that's what we do. Okay. What about the private culinary service? So private culinary service is um that would basically um fall under like if you are in say say a school need me to um come on in to show um the class something or if it's a workplace mm-hmm. you have in say a birthday party for a staff member somebody. It's a baby shower, mm-hmm. those type of stuff, then I'll do it. I do every event. Once food is needed, I'm there. Right. So if I'm having a party, you're the guy that's preparing, you're just like you're a chef and you're the one that's preparing the food in the yes. background for prepare. everybody. Yes, for everyone. Nice. Yeah. Yes, so that's preparing, sharing, cleaning up all those stuff. It's done. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, drop off catering? Drop off catering, yes. So it's like, so like Christmas is coming up. We just, um, you know, Thanksgiving out of the way now. So I can do a turkey for you, a cake, something, take it to your place and that's it. Like, I don't want to cook. I'm going to pay you to do it, get it done, yes. drop it off. So, like, persons even doing meal plan, I do meal plan as well. Oh, nice. So, I'll plan all your meal for the week, yep. cook it, you pick it up, or I drop it off, and that's it for the week for you. Nice. Good yeah. to know you. All those stuff. Yeah. Uh, corporate catering, I guess, is, uh, is the same thing as catering just on a corporate level? Yes. On a corporate level, yeah, I put it in a workplace, so, yep. like, yeah. All right. So, obviously, you're, you spend a lot of time cooking. What is your favorite thing that you like to cook for yourself? Myself, I would say something Omi from Jamaica, of course, you know, being here in, in the cold in Canada, having some Jamaican food really gave me some comfort of home. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice Jamaican oxtail for sure. Yeah. With some rice and peas. <laughs> You're laughing, you know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can say that I don't know already, I know. Right? Some curry goat, you yeah. know. Those kind of home food give us some, some steamed fish. I like fish. Yeah. Some steamed fish with okra and stuff. That's my type of food. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Wow, I'm really hungry now. Um, <laughs> okay, so is, oh, is is your end game owning a restaurant? Like, would you like to open your own restaurant here in Winnipeg, or you want to stay mobile with the catering thing? And it's my goal to mm-hmm. really open my restaurant, and it's a perfect spot here in Winnipeg. You mm-hmm. know, these people they love their food, which is good, and I support and I endorse. Mm-hmm. And it's a nice part of a Jamaican restaurant. Mm-hmm. Persons always ask me, "Where can I get some Jamaican food? Can I? I need some. with a Jamaican restaurant?" And I'm like, you know. Soon and very soon, yeah. Cuisine by Noel will be opening right here in Winnipeg. Yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, it'll some good, Jamaican man. fusion. Yeah. Um, so if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do so? Um, I'm very active on Facebook, Chef Noel Cunningham. Yep. My website, chefnoelcunningham.com, Instagram at I am Chef Connie, Twitter, I am Chef Connie. And for phone number, 204-679-4690. That's perfect. Thanks for coming yes. by, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. We'll be back after the break to talk to food blogger Shel Zolkovich and Johnny Keane from the LA Travel Group to talk about the Taste the Vacation Culinary Tour coming up March 2017. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Ever been on or heard of a culinary tour? 
Well, food blogger Shal Zolkowicz and Johnny Keen from the LA Travel Group are here to tell us about the Taste the Vacation Culinary Tour, which is coming up in March 2017 in Mexico. Okay, so <laughs> so Taste the Vacation is a culinary tour. So what's a yes. culinary tour? I think it's an awesome idea, by the way. We just, uh, we eat. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get you off know, the plane and you just I think it. uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, you were talking about all the places I've written for and whatnot, and, uh, you know, I think if you go back sort of 10 years, if I was assigned a story by a magazine that was about what to do in Moose Jaw, you know, you talk about all the attractions and whatnot. But I would say within about the last five years, every story has a huge culinary component to it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you find this in print and radio and television, right? It's it's always people want to know where to eat and they want to explore those culinary traditions of the place no matter where it is. So this is sort of an evolution of that. Right, and I find the, one of the biggest things when you go on vacation, like you said, you read about great spots, your friends tell you about great spots, but you never can really find them. It's a lot of work to find them when you get there. Sure, you can eat on site, but you kind of want to go where the locals are, and finding that you're on your own is... Yeah, and I mean, that that's sort of the secret, right? It, it takes a little bit of legwork, and, and a lot of people aren't uh, aren't really comfortable doing that. You know, right. they, you know is, is my cab ride going to cost me $40, and am I going to go to a place that's not great, and that sort of thing. So... So we have done that legwork for you. We actually went to Mexico last month and uh, spent a couple days, you know. What a horrible, horrible, you know, job. It was job. work. It was <laughs> it work. Was work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds really great, yeah. but um, we were on the go, like for three solid days, sourcing out places and, you know, crossing some things off our list that yeah. we thought might work and finding some new great things that we didn't even know about. So it was really hard to find. Well, obviously, you, you have to find in order to find, let's say, half a dozen good places, how many places would you have to go to find the places that are the ones you want to take people to? Well, we toured everywhere. When we were walking <laughs> in, and it was like 34 degrees, sun blistering down. Like, I honestly thought I was going to faint because <laughs> we're standing there. We're like, you know, we're, we're, we're actually looking on our phones, on little, little maps, and people are like, hey, check out this corner. Turn here. Turn left. Turn right. And we're like, hey, we, we would walk by places and not even know. And then I walk back, I'm like, hey, this is it. Yep. And then, you know, pop in and be like, okay, let's let's try a couple things. Let's do this. Yeah, because some of those places that are holes in the walls are actually holes in the walls. Really? I mean, it is one door and it might have a sign on it. Yep. But unless you sort of know where to go, uh, you're going to walk right by it. Wow. Okay, let's talk about the beginning of it, the hotel that you're staying at. We're going to talk about the actual tour itself. Sure, sure. So the hotel that uh, for Taste of Vacation is the, the now Jade uh, Riviera Cancun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a five-star resort, uh, about three kilometers away from uh, Porto Amorelos. And uh, yeah, it's it's beautiful, beautiful resort, right? You know, on the ocean, with white sand. Um, in itself, they have beautiful restaurants. Um, they also do uh, gourmet 24-7 room service. You know, it's, this is all-inclusive resort. Yep. Uh, so, you know, that's it's a, it's a super luxury resort in itself already. And then, you know, we're going to take the comforts of that resort and then kind of take you off the beaten path for a, a glimpse of life in Mexico and check yeah, out the places. The resort around. was absolutely gorgeous. And what really struck me about this resort, it's, um, it's in a sort of a very uh, contemporary but posh style, something mm-hmm. I've really not seen before. Usually when you have these luxury five-star resorts, they're very sort of traditional in right. terms of design and decor. But this one was really modern, beautiful colors in the room, you know, nice sofas. And the other thing that really struck me is the way it was designed to take full advantage of that ocean view. And, you know, it's a little bit elevated and you look down and that blue water and you can see um, the fishing pier in the village of Puerto Morales. Um, It's kind of a postcard, really. Is that right? Yeah, it's beautiful. So when you were at the hotel and you finally want to leave because it's so nice, what are some of the places that you're going to be going to? So we're going to go out into and venture into the town uh, of Port Morelos, uh, one of the places that was one of the coolest things was uh, <laughs> this shipping container. Um, you know, Shell's like, hey, we have to go check out this shipping container. And, and of like, course, these guys are like, mm-hmm, yeah, a shipping <laughs> container, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, we, we parked the car and we're walking along, we're trying to find it. People are giving us directions. You know, we, we still don't know where it is. Finally, we walk by and we're like, this is the shipping container. This and then, you know, as it would happen, because you're in a village, this village is small. Everyone knows each other. And we're sort of standing and looking at the shipping container, which is all closed up and doesn't really have any signage or whatever. And this guy walks up to us and he's like, hey, how's it going? We're like, good. And we're like, oh, is this a restaurant? He's like, yeah, I work here. 
Of course you do, you know. Yeah, so yeah. he says, yeah, we're going to be opening in about 20 minutes. Why don't you guys come back and, you know, and... Um, and it's an actual shipping container. It's an actual shipping container um, that when they open for business, all the doors and the sides flip on open. So yep. it's sort of an open air. There's a full kitchen in there. And outside, there's about 10 tables. And uh, you get a nice view of the beach. And uh, it, like Johnny said, it's kind of the coolest thing we ever stumbled upon. That is yeah, cool. Yeah, they, they label it as a, a premium uh, dive restaurant. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's, and the, I mean, the chef who runs this, he's, he's you know, um, got quite the resume, uh, spent most of his career in New York, actually, oh. working for, you know, he rattled off a few names, and they were all the big names in the culinary world, and yeah. we were like, whoa, 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 back up, back up, uh, came to the area to take a job uh, in the town of Cancun, and then decided, you know what, he likes living in a small town much better, and he opened up this place, so we're going to be going there and visiting with him. How was the food? Well, Johnny, how was the food? <laughs> <laughs> the food was definitely amazing. Uh, very, very, very good. It was a fusion of let's Asian and Mexican and I can't yeah, it's just it you know, super creative, super interesting things on the menu that you would never ever uh, think about, and things that you know you might be a little bit apprehensive to order, but when you taste that food, like this chef obviously knows what he's doing mm -hmm. is uh, I mean we had a few bites and uh, we we're like okay we're coming right back here like the next day we yep. have to come back it was it was spectacular yeah I guess yeah it was served in you know like paper uh, bowls and plates which you know have have that uh, I guess feeling of the you know the dive but you know they had this coconut rice this this pork belly those braised uh, this octopus and it was it, definitely amazing uh, another uh, colleague that we were with he doesn't eat octopus. And he tried the octopus and he was like, I love this. I, I can't believe I'm eating this right now. Yeah, yeah. He was. So, you know, when you can change people's you know, perception of, of certain food by, by cooking a different way or trying it in you know, an elevated way, then. I think it's a definitely a good place. And For I sure. think that's part of the, the fun on going on a culinary tour is that you've had someone sort of suss it out for you a little bit, right? Uh -huh. uh, so when we go on this, we're going to, you know, we're going to put together a meal that's family style and we're going to, you know, uh, get the story of the chef. We're going to try all these different dishes and maybe there's some folks in the crowd, you know, who like our colleague and never tried something, mm -hmm. tries it and says, wow, that's great. You know, I've been missing out all this time. We'll be back with more main ingredient after the break. Hey, welcome back, everybody. That hour just flew by super quick. Uh, join me next week as I chat with Sherry Sobey about the Local Love MB event where you can sample the best Manitoba has to offer in food development down at the Forks. And my name is Kevin Bergen, and this is The Main Ingredient, and I'll talk to you next week on 680 CJOB. This is 680 CJOB.